Institute for Social Justice was originally called FOCAL, the Federation of Child Care Centers of Alabama. Um, the organization really started when a group of African American women in Selma, Alabama decided that they wanted equitable child care for their children. And so that was really this catalytic moment for the organization. And over the years, it really became uh, a child care advocacy agency and is responsible for many of the child care laws and policies, including uh, having had a direct impact on the now minimum standards um, that is sort of the guiding premise for how child care centers should be established and set up. So over the years, the organization um, really morphed into being a social justice organization in the sense that when we were doing child care work, we recognized that child care wasn't an issue that could be addressed in a vacuum. And so we started taking on some of those ancillary issues because we knew that the families that we serve, which are primarily residents who live in rural parts of Alabama, really needed a more comprehensive strategy. And so that's who Focal became and really who it has always been. We had to advocate for those dollars. Governor Siegelman was the governor at that time. And one of the things, and during that time, the minimum standards were being revised. And so we went around and talked with providers and said, would you help us advocate to receive additional money so that you could provide quality to those children of the parents that you were serving. And that is what we did. We just got out there, went door to door almost, advocating on the phone, talking to folks, sending emails, writing letters, but it was done. I feel the same way for us. We moving the state forward for us early education. There was a time that there was doubtful, but now I see the light, uh, I see us moving, moving forward in a positive direction. Well, who am I? I am a community organizer. I've been doing this work for approximately 25 years. And currently I am a senior organizer with the Center for Community Change that is based out of Washington, DC. One of the things that is very important for our work at the Center for Community Change is to center our work in communities that are most impacted by the issues that we're working on. So when we started to think about this work, we started to think about who was doing this work already. And of course, the Federation of Child Care Centers of Alabama, they were at the forefront of recognizing that child care was a civil rights issue that if we wanted people to succeed economically, you needed to have that support in order to be able to do those things. More than ever, we need to ensure that every eligible person that can vote is actually able to vote and register to vote. And we did a huge push um, this past last few months um, leading up to the midterm elections where we were able to get hundreds of folks registered for the first time. We were uh, actually able to get folks who were former um, felons registered to vote. Uh, and so that's work that we will continue to do year round. Well, one barrier that uh, affects the voters in Alabama, I would say, is the purging of the voters' roll. I've worked as an elected official during the elections, and I've experienced people coming in stating that they had voted in the previous elections, but their names are no longer on the roll, or they're in the inactive form of the roll. It's a major effect on uh, voters especially minority voters. My work is actually helping to network with not just the community and community organizing, but also with um, politicians that are already in office, making sure that they're aware of what um, the Alabama Institute for Social Justice is actually doing. Our work is the mission. Uh, we go out into the communities, we mobilize, it's talking to the people who actually live in the communities, finding out what their issues are. I think a huge barrier, especially not just in Alabama, but in Montgomery County, is um, voter education. Actually understanding why they should vote and the, and the ramifications of not voting, I think is extremely important. We're gonna actually go back to the neighborhoods. It's time for us to start talking to the community on just not why they should go vote, but this is, this is what voting will do for you in your community.
can't tell you how I myself was inspired by a series of events that we had this past year uh, around racial healing and reconciliation where we brought in speakers from around the country to address uh, these sort of racial gaps that still exist in our community. You know, I don't care how much progress we make in this country, the fact of the matter is that we can't create real change working in silos. So we have to be able to bring diverse peoples together, people from different ethnicities, backgrounds, from various religious backgrounds, including sexual orientation. We have to bring all kinds of people together to actually solve these problems. So please help me in welcoming a historian and author, Dr. Charles B. Duke. I went to Williams College in, in Western Massachusetts. It's the first time I had been out of the South, first time I'd been north of the Potomac. And my first day on campus, I realized I had a new world. I had an African-American classmate who lived in my dorm entry. And that was brand new to me. Uh, I had never had a relationship with anyone across the color line that wasn't really regularly uh, confined by the racial etiquette that governed the way black and white interacted in that era. Uh, and here I had an equal partner in my, uh, in my class. So that was, that was really the beginning. Um, I not only absorbed my, my Confederate history, I absorbed the Jim Crow cultural uh, values. And it, it was during those four years in college that I got out from under that, that particular rock. In the absence of a sort of truth and reconciliation process in this country, that individuals have got to take it upon themselves to speak. You hear something racist, you call somebody on it. It's important for everybody to stand up right now. If we roll over, it's only going to get worse. We have more in common than not. It's important for us to recognize those things that we do have in common and begin to appreciate the fact that we are one. When people uh, come to the point where they can identify with others and be able to see the commonality, there are enough people who are ready to take action to bring about change. This is a great period in our history when this is possible to bring about changes. I've seen them happen. Racial healing and reconciliation is essential as a focus right now. We are hammering at this wall in as many different ways as we know how. The critical first step is dialogue. I'm excited about the way forward with AISJ. I think that we are perfectly poised and positioned to be the change that uh, not only the state of Alabama, but that America needs. I think that our brand and our mission is as timely as ever. Uh, there has been a great amount of enthusiasm and interest in our work. Um, and we've been getting that support from um, myriad places. We, uh, as an organization, try to do the things that bring not only uh, empowerment, but visibility to the people who have just kind of traditionally been um, the most marginalized or most vulnerable people in our society. We try to ensure that we not only engage the community, but we encourage the community in participating with us and ensuring um, that there's empowerment for women and people of color and uh, ensuring that those issues that have been part of, of the legacy of Alabama, such as institutional inequities or societal inequities, remain at the forefront. We are excited, not only um, because of some of the acknowledgements that we've seen, but we're, we're really getting a lot of interest from young folks. This year, I invited Dr. Patton to be a speaker at the event that my school hosted. Um, we called it Walk Out to Stand Up, and it was basically 
informing students about gun control and school shootings. You have to worry about your generation and the next generation, and I'm the next generation. When I speak at places, uh, I always say two things. Number one, it took, it only takes one to start a movement. And then, um, and when you do it, it's not just for you. You're doing it for other people. There isn't an age limit for any of this. You don't have to be, you know, 18 and older, 19, 20, 21 on up. If you have a mission and a purpose, you need to fulfill it. I totally agree. <laughs> So grassroots organizing is one of our six platforms as well and it is probably um, one of the ones I'm most excited about because it is um, directly reflective of our history and mobilization as an organization. Because grassroots organizing really still does matter. The fact of the matter is that the power is always in the people. Currently I'm a college student and I do community organizing. So right now one big thing that I'm doing is voter registration. I'm trying to get as many voters out as possible. Especially my age group, a lot of us don't feel the need to vote and we don't see why we should be voting, but it's a lack of voter education. Everything we do plays a part, you know, in society. I hope to see people like me young people like me that are out there doing the work. So many people that we look up to were really young, and I don't think people realize that. John Lewis was young. Uh, John Lewis was 19, I think, when he crossed that summer bridge. Martin Luther King, he was young. So I don't think people really realize that. I would say that Alabama Institute for Social Justice is a leader when it comes to relationship building. We know that even in the 21st century, there are issues around equity as it relates to women. Uh, a big one is pay equity. We know that women continue to not be paid um, equally in terms of the type of work that they perform. When women have a seat at the table, they're able to put forth concerns that, um, that are definitely uh, important to the family that are important to society. And I think that when we, when we look at the role of women in society, we understand that we carry a lot and we, we help to shape not only just our families, but we help to shape cultures. When there is um, a point where things begin to shift, then that's when the fear kicks in. That's when, um, we have laws that come into place. We have policies that, um, that definitely want to restrict access. That means that somebody in power is not wanting to relinquish that power. This road that we're on takes us to Lowndes County. There is a waste water management um, issue and that issue uh, has really been framed as a human rights issue because um, it has been acknowledged that having access to not only clean water but uh, an adequate waste management system is a human right. And we have people right here in the state of Alabama who are living in homes and, and um, residing on lands where raw sewage backs up into their homes and into their yard. The bigger issue is that when people are being required to acquire these septic tanks to manage uh, their waste in their communities, uh, some of these systems cost fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and we're talking about people whose homes are only valued at ten to twenty thousand dollars, and so that is most definitely an equity issue. AISJ. Uh, has been dedicated to actually putting resources into these communities. an advocate for children, 
if you want to to get out for voter rights and registration, if if you believe in women's equality, there's there's just something there for everybody. I would just encourage anybody to again to volunteerism, period, but specifically to AISJ. My name is Michael Sibley. I'm the president of the board of the Alabama Institute for Social Justice. And what I would say to you is to take a look at the platforms that we support. You have a voice and you can make a difference in your community and in your state. See if there's something that impacts you. We need your insight, we need your creativity, we need your talent, we need whatever it is that you bring to the table to help us support the mission of the Alabama Institute for Social Justice. At the end of the day, I think about this old hymn that I used to hear uh, when I was growing up in Pritchard, Alabama, an old song that was called, If I Can Help Someone uh, As I Go Along the Way, Then My Living Will Not Be In Vain.